thank you so much for joining us. Um, and obviously we're gonna hear from these wonderful artists speaking about this incredible solo show, which they've been working tirelessly to create over the past year. Um, Tim, we're joined by Tim Rawlinson, who has hosted a number of these events in the past, and he's going to be chatting with the artists this evening. If you have any questions, from our, both to our guests who are physically joining us here in the gallery and to you at home. If either of you have any questions, um, raise your hand or write in. There's a chat box at the bottom of your screen or a Q&A box. Click on either of those, type in. Pamela, please do, we, we welcome interaction. Please do write in. But what's very important is that you make a, a note of the artwork and the artist that your question refers to. So we can hopefully try and pick up a few questions along the way, but you know, towards the end of the talk, we'll, we'll focus on the Q and A's and, um, and yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to know sort of who your question's referring to. So I will hand over now, I think I've said everything. Um, oh, one more thing, um, my colleague James, who's controlling the PowerPoint and the videos, um, I think he's, he's going to include a link to the catalogue so you can see all the work that Elliot and Beth are discussing this evening. You'll be able to see the work in, you know, in better detail with the prices and the dimensions. Feel free to call us, we're here all night, um, or drop us an email if there's something that you really want to snap up, but you have to be quick because <laughs> we've already had a few pieces literally fly off the wall this evening um so yes anyway enough of that i'll hand over to tim mm -hmm. and i'll hand in the mic thank you thank you sophie yeah welcome everyone to london glass blowing uh joined tonight by elliot walker and bethany woods uh elliot and beth are partners in crime in the the work they make but also in life so it's uh, a unique uh, relationship of, of work and love. And I think probably that goes to be seen within the work that's made. And as that is, uh, is that a complicated relationship? Is that a, uh, a difficult? Uh... <clears throat> well, I start with a, quite a good question. <laughs> um, I think it has been, hasn't it? It, it has. I mean, we, we, we were working together before we were yes. together. And then the working relationship and the personal relationship has just become more and more in depth and serious. And uh, we've managed to avoid any huge traumas, but mostly through communication, mostly me listening and, and, and you, <laughs> you saying, don't you think? I mean, you're definitely the boss. Uh, well, I think the secret is, is just don't bring it home. Yeah, yeah, you have to try not to bring it home. You know? Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's, it's a very, stressful. because obviously, it's a very stressful environment to work in, but it, you know, we've, you know, we've been literally making work constantly for the mm. past two years together, really intensively, really complicated pieces. And uh, it's been great. You know, we wouldn't do it any other way. We couldn't do it any other way. Well, that's the thing with, with hot glass making. You use the word intense, and it can be incredibly intense making, especially the complexity of these blown works. And each second can sometimes be vital. And sometimes you also have to be very quick or loud, maybe, with There's your needs or demand. For, please or thank you. No. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it, it, some, it can be sometimes, I don't want to say rude, but it has, you might need something immediately. So uh, that can be maybe a complicated complex relationship than to have yeah i mean you yeah. do you do get used to it but i think um i, I think over time elliot just needs us to raise his eyebrow and then i tend <laughs> to know what he wants yeah there's a lot of uh <laughs> unvoiced opinions about things yeah, going yeah. On. but we, we we tend to get more distraught when i mean there's disasters all the time in yeah. the studio as you know but we tend to get more distraught at the others disasters mm. um so like if a piece of mine falls off the iron i'm usually a little bit better about it than than, than you are. Yeah. i feel a little bit calm is that a lie <laughs> that's true that's i get true. more distraught when elliot's work goes on the floor yeah. and, and elliot gets more distraught when my work goes on yeah. the floor yeah so we're definitely like emotionally so invested yeah. and physically invested i mean you know a lot of these pieces are like hours 
on the pipe. Mm. You know, we're there with it for a few hours and it's always at the last minute when it goes wrong and you know one of us is crying and it's usually the wrong one or, or a broom gets broken or a broom gets destroyed yeah but with the the technical involvement of making these very sophisticated works i think having the relationship that you do then will really imbue itself into the work of knowing each other that well of knowing when you need something whether it's an eyebrow raised or something like that so surely that sort of symbiotic relationship really I, th I can see that it's evolving your glass making together and it's it's reflected in the caliber of work I think. yeah i would say we're definitely evolving at the same time and we're we're informing each other's work and each other's process and we've got to the stage now where um you know we've got such a choreography in the studio that if you if you put someone else in the mix unless they're standing very very still uh the whole thing sort of falls apart you know it, it our best work, I think, you know, within reason is done when we're there on our own, you know, alone, being able to work the magic together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've definitely got more hench. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, the, the scale of these pieces, uh, there's some corn over there. Uh, the scale of those are very impressive. Yeah, I mean, they, they, there is, there is <laughs> the, the, the equipment we're working with at the minute is, it's not of a scale that we'd like. So we've basically been maxing out all of our equipment um, to make this work. And that the, the prone um, maze piece that um, I think is on the screen now, you know, it's hugely heavy. It's hugely heavy. And the more parts you add to it, the heavier it gets. And mm -hmm. I, I barely lift that, you know, Beth's- Beth is, the Beth, is, Beth is the muscle. Beth is the muscle and- uh, <laughs> I'm sort of messing around, making a leaf in the corner, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and then adding to her burden. Well, that's the thing, just to sort of give a bit of more depth to the actual process. When you're working glass hot, it cools very quickly. So you're constantly having to get heat back into the glass to just do the slightest touch. And you can see the intricacy of these pieces. It must go on for such a long period of time to be able to just do each little bit. So it's, it's a very involved it, process. I it? mean, that that is, th there are certain ways of doing things where you can um, rely on um, a lot of torch work and a lot of um, specific heating. But, you know, talking about the way, the, the length of time we've been working together now, I am so reliant on the fact that Beth will bring me one of these because each of the, um, the little uh, corn kernels is put on as a, as a like a long strap. So, so individual we, bits of glass yeah, brought so to we you. Put like a long thing. strap on it and then I crimp it the whole way up. And I'm relying on the fact that Beth will bring it at the perfect temperature, the perfect size to be able to run it the whole way up this piece, which is about like a foot and a half long. And then it'll have enough temperature in it for me to crimp it the entire way up. You know, if it's a little bit too cold, it wouldn't work. If it's too hot in the center or the surface, the whole thing becomes deformed. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a complicated thing to describe, but the, the, the service of each of these parts and components needs to be so bang on. And that's mm. what we've developed together, really, you know, this, this idea of a proper glass service. And when I'm bringing the bubbles for Beth, Beth's pieces, especially, there are so many different types of bubbles, so many different thicknesses. You need them uh, blown slightly. You need them colder, hotter, thicker, thinner. So you're and, talking about Beth's landscape. Yeah, so the, yeah. So there's about seven different types of bubbles that you use on all of the different pieces, depending on the color or, or the pattern. And I have to make sure I bring them right. Yeah. Otherwise she moves the iron and knocks my teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> Beth, uh, the, these pieces, um, I particularly love Poseidon behind you. Um, maybe it's just because I, I sort of like water and aquatics, but could you maybe explain a little bit how you achieved that sort of silvered mirrored <laughs> so, so we had quite a lot of trial and error with uh, with the reducing reduction colours. So the reduction is the. Do you want to explain a bit about reduction? That, that is the metal oxide in the glass uh, being brought to the surface or by silvers the or gold. silvers or gold uh, being brought to the surface by the fluffy torch. So we call it the gas. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, we we found out. Recently, we, we contacted the lady from from the colour supplier. We had to Kugler. go direct to the colour supplier Kugler. Kugler, from Kugler to find out how we could. Because every time we were making things, you know, and again.
get. It's like a few hours work or three hours work for the bigger ones. And then um, we'd put them away in the kiln and two days later, after all that effort, uh, they come out without the reduction. You know, the silver was just disappearing. Yeah, it would, it would, be, it would be a nightmare. <laughs> They'd just come out completely black and we'd spend so much time and effort on these big pieces. Again, so again and again. So it's a very invested sort of investigation. It, it is. And, and it's it, alchemy, I guess. Exactly. And it's alchemy we don't, we're not trained in. No. <laughs> So, so then we found out if we if we um, put the blowtorch through some wood, maybe the wood would create a reaction so that 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 would make it metallic. Yeah. So you're trying to reduce the oxygen. You're trying to use a lot of gas and reduce the oxygen that's the piece is exposed to to bring the colors out. It's all a little bit geeky, but basically we were throwing bits of wood in the kiln. Yeah. We were, we were, like, we were throwing newspaper in the in the glory hole so as yeah, well, and that was exciting. creating. Yeah, that was really quite exciting. But it would be very shiny before it went in the Leah. The answer to the question is we have to anneal it about 30 degrees colder than you'd ever want than to. You'd ever want to. And it right, keeps the reduction. So, these, yeah. so when, when, when Beth makes these pieces, they have a kiln that one of them goes in. Yeah. And then that is a completely separate program. It's a completely different cycle and it, it has to be in, its, in the kiln on its own. So when we do these, it's a very sort of special thing. And I hate it because I'm just waiting for mm. the lid to open and oh, it's gone again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, so they've been, they've been hard. I love the textures of these pieces, Beth. The Thank fact you. that it's not a smooth outside object. The fact that it's really three-dimensional, and almost four-dimensional, that you get that tactile quality of it, the raised surface, really adds to the quality. What, what, I know you've talked about landscape with them. Is that sort of what you're trying to evoke? Or? It is. I mean, this one particularly is to do with water and, uh, and, and but the sea. Um, you, you get the difference between the metallic and the green because some of the bubbles are encased in clear so that it won't do, it won't react. So they can just sort of bounce off each other in a, in a, in a particular way. Yeah, I, very enjoyable pieces. Some of them like you've been doing work where the, the bubble is clear and you actually have the foreground and the background as well, which is great. Yeah, so this piece, obviously, the, the background is is opaque, so you can't see through the piece, whereas this other one, which Anthony is filming right now, it has a foreground and a background, so I can put patterns on the back of the piece so you can look through it and you can see, as in a landscape, where you get the foreground as like layers of mountains and sky, etc. Almost a three-dimensional painting. Exactly. Well, yes. They're, they're very beautiful. It's been, it's been great to see you evolve the glassmaker because in the, I mean, if you look at maybe career of a Peter Layton, you're, you're really quite at the sort of beginnings of body of work and the way that it's evolved, I think it's fantastic. So it's really interesting to see how that's going to develop over the years. Thank you. And Peter has been a massive inspiration to me as well. Yeah, so. we've all to, a, to us all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Elliot, I, I really wanted to ask you, when I, when I came in, I've been away for a while, and I came, saw this show for the first time yesterday and absolutely blown away by it. Excuse the pun. That's yeah, a good one. It's a good one. But genuinely, it is fantastic. And looking around, I suddenly thought, what is Elliot's obsession with food? <laughs> yeah. I said, what's Elliot's obsession with food? He seems to be quite taken with yeah. either yeah. place settings or still life of wine and meat, or I think these, are these meant to be almost like GM fruits? So this is the future? Yeah, it is G GM <laughs> and this, this sort of pursuit of perfection. I mean, the, the, the still life works that I've been making for quite a few years, you know, they were they were based on this idea of like preservation, um, and the idea of like you know you 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 take a photo of your meal or you do a painting of a beautiful banquet and it's and it's preserved and there's nothing that lasts as long and is as impervious to sunlight or or damp or anything like that as glass. I mean, glass as long as it's kept. Intact. safe safe <laughs> intact it'll just last for you know it'll last forever really you know people think that it's still a liquid and it's going to eventually blob to the floor but it's never going to change you know 
Um, so that that sort of started it all off. This idea of like pre preserving that idea of of what we're eating and and you know the 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 perception we have of it. Obviously, there's an obsession with tableware. I think for anyone who's interested in the actual process of glass making, you can't get away from this being the height of, <laughs> of glass. You know, this is the thing you want to make. The goblet itself is like the, the, the ultimate glass challenge and glass obsession. Well, I think if you have your ability in the hot shop, maybe that's a, it's a something love, that you hate see thing. Through, but... I think it's a love-hate thing for me. You know, once you get well, to the Well, clearly, stage, when you yeah. start hammering <laughs> nails through them... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think, yeah. I think these pieces as well, you know, that you show a glass maker one of these and they understand exactly the feeling straight <laughs> away. And, you know, I, I'm, you know, I love them. I'm really happy with them. And I, and I want other people to sort of understand the frustration and the, um, you know, the obsession, you know, and that's what these pieces are about really for me. And, and it's the same with the, with the crushed goblet there, the corruption. I mean, that has the added element of this awful, awful pattern, reticello, which is, <laughs> I mean, it's beautiful, but it's absolutely ridiculously difficult to produce. Um, <clears throat> and it's something I never thought I'd do, but it's a, it's a means to an end here. It's a, it's a way of getting this um, this idea across, you know, the yeah, of weight of this technique. The uh, I also, when I saw the goblets nailed to the wall, maybe it's just my upbringing, but I thought of Fantasia. Maybe I've got too much of a Disney upbringing, but I sort of thought of these dancing, brought to life inanimate objects who were caught and... <laughs> right, see, when, when I first made them, there, there was a set of three, and it was like the ducks it had that sort of <laughs> that kitsch thing as well which i'm quite into like kitsch and and stuff and, and that 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 those three ducks going across the wall that's what it sort of it was like the glass makers version of the um of the old ducks flying uh, south or whatever you know and the, and the nails themselves uh are they made by a metal work yeah or? so they so this um series was made sort of in collaboration with uh sam ritty who's a, a jeweler and silversmith who works in London as well. And he's, uh, he's, he's like a good friend, him and his partner. And, you know, he's the most helpful person in the world. You know, we get him to do an awful lot of stuff for us now. But yeah, so they're forged, um, like roughly forged out of bronze and okay. then patinated and polished. And then the black goblets at the end, they're uh, solid silver. Wow. Um, for that, you know, that contrast of material as well. And I think they've- That's a large really amount well. of silver. It's a lot of silver, yeah. I mean, he was, you know, we, we were thinking about a gold one, but apparently one nail would be about 1,500 pounds. So we, yeah, we, we, wow. we stayed away from that for now, you know. Yeah, the fluctuating prices of metals, I guess. Is... And the same with glass as well, you know, everything's in flux at the minute. Yeah. I mean, we're, you know, I feel really lucky that, you know, that, that we've had this exposure and, and this boost in, in what we're doing, because without that, you know, the, 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 you know, to be blunt, the prize money from Blown Away got us, got our studio through the lockdown and then this exposure will help when us. When we're to... talking about exposure, we're talking about you winning yeah, season the, two yeah, of Blown exactly. Away. On that, but... Without that, I don't know what would have happened to well, us, really. Well, but... it's a life-changing thing to mm, have done that. Mm, yeah. And, you know, having worked with you for many years, uh, I know me and Peter are very proud of you and watching you on that. And, then, you know, everyone was cheering you along, but for the two of you, that must literally have changed your whole direction and what you're able to do together. And what 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 what? Well, Bethany's, what has it opened up for Bethany's you? Bethany's bared the brunt of everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. Well, I've, I've I've loved it. I've enjoyed riding Elliot's way. I've enjoyed uh, speak just just talking to people for Elliot because he's been so busy in the hot shop. We've, we're finally able to open our own studio um, in the Midlands, which is really exciting for us. So it's, it's opened up that definitely. And I've also been able to have time to make my own work because Elliot's been able to free up some time because he hasn't been so bogged down by having to make lighting. Make lighting. <laughs> yes, because that's what he does in his, in his own time other than making his own work because he makes lighting for interior design companies, etc. So yeah, that means that I've been able to flourish in, in glass myself other than being Elliot's 
assistant. So yeah, it, it's, it's been fab. It's been fab for both of us. And uh, we're very grateful for everybody and for, for this yeah, amazing the show. We've had and, yeah. yeah. And I guess a few things with lockdowns and COVID have meant that a lot of what you would gain from that show has been on standby in terms of, I think from winning, you're meant to do uh, there's a place called Corning Museum of Glass, which is in America, which is a very prestigious museum and an incredible facility. Uh, and part of you winning that show, you you, you get a residency there. Mm, is that yeah, correct? Yeah. So do you still know if you're able to or when you... Yeah, win? so, I mean, basically, I came back from um, filming, which was, you know, everything was quite normal in um, in Canada. Uh, and because we were so closeted, we didn't know what, well, I didn't know. I wasn't watching the news or anything like that. I didn't really know what was happening. And then I come back to Heathrow, a walk through a completely empty airport. And then we go to the supermarket and there's nothing on the shelves. And then I find some toilet roll in the back of my van, which had been there for like seven weeks or that, oh you know, God. yeah, we've got it, we've got it. <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was a completely mad thing. And then for the, for the whole year, um, the first year of the the pandemic, um, you know, the show hadn't come out, and we it was delayed, wasn't it? It was delayed for yeah, it was delayed because of the election, or I don't know, it was delayed for whatever reason. Netflix wanted to delay it, but it was a whole year before the actual show launched, and so for that entire year, we were, you know, we were in this sort of bizarre situation with everybody else. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so when it eventually aired. And it turned out we couldn't actually go anywhere or do anything. <laughs> it was like, well, we'll just go back to the studio and make some more work, shall we? And so yeah. we did. And so we've been just like, you know, we've, I don't think either of us have had more creative a period, you know, enforced creativity, just like alone together with your thoughts and, you know, with your process and being able to go in the studio because we live together as well. Uh, and you know we're not really exposing anyone or ourselves to anything else so it's been it's been really wild and then all of the attention has been online and i'm terrible online you know i can't do it really <laughs> well, you, were, you, you were pretty good on the show man. Yeah. I think, uh, you came across very well well thank you yeah i mean they edited me very well <laughs> <laughs> i did it was it was very kind yeah i did i did get along with the producer quite well yeah. <laughs> And he is better online than he is in person, actually, because when it every... Do you reckon, <laughs> <laughs> Did anyone else say that? Oh, I had a point! I had a point! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, dig yourself out of that. <laughs> and then, because every time it gets spotted, it goes bright red. Oh, yeah, I'm awful on the screen, and, yeah. And yeah. I say, oh, I'll take a picture of you both, and it's like, no! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, so I've been hiding behind my mask in public, but I think, um, you know, I think it's very different here. People who are lovers of glass, like everyone in the room and people watching, you know, they'll know what's going on. Mm. Most of the people, you know, it's, it's still like a very fringe thing. It's a very fringe show in the UK, but in the States, I think it, it's such, it's much more of a mainstream thing. So I think when we go out there, might be quite an eye opener. It'll be a bit of an eye opener, yeah. I mean, I've, I've I've been talking to some of the people at Corning, and they've been saying that they've he heard people in the local shop or down the road in the supermarket going like chatting at the checkout, like, "When do you think that Elliot's coming to Corning?" It's like, <laughs> "I'm on my way. I'm coming." You know? <laughs> Watch out, everybody! <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, the imposed sort of studio intensive period that then that caused is completely worth it the caliber of the work that's here it, it really is of amazing standard and it's lovely to have your final piece not the final piece not the the remade final piece yeah. but of what won you the show mm. uh i do love it there's a sort of an element of jeff coons of these blown up yeah toys yeah that yeah i really think, do enjoy yeah why is the screwdriver bigger than the hammer? Uh, <laughs> wow. <well. laughs> uh, or is that perspective? It's, it's fun, yeah, it's probably perspective. No, it's, it's um, you know, I think, I think with this piece, the, the strange thing about it is um, because I know this piece, you know, it, it, it's so difficult. It was Did so you know difficult. you wanted to make that as your, if you got to the end, this was what you were going to do? Uh, so we, we sort of started thinking, we were, we were told to start to think about it um, at the halfway point. Um, and 
I definitely had this in mind or something similar to this. I had a few different versions of the final piece, um, which again, I'm going to, I'm going to actually work on, mm. you know, cause I want to see them realized. And I was just so excited to actually do this, Yeah, but you know, and I'd, I'd, I'd sort of worked it all out and then having the team from Corning. I mean, I, when, when we actually made it, I didn't make one screw. I, I, I showed them how I thought they should do it. And how large then, was the team? How many of them? It was, it was four, uh, no, it was three with me. So, um, yeah, there's a lady, Helen, Chris, and then Jeff, who I think is, but these are all exceptional. Oh, these are, yeah, unbelievably talented. And then, and then I'm there like t telling them what to do, you know, like, <laughs> as if I know. And then I was going over and like checking on what they were doing. It's like, it felt really weird. Um, and everybody, and but I didn't really know them by name because, you know, I'm not a part of that world. And I remember Kat like sort of informing me and in who was good at what and who was the best at sculpting. And, and then, and then I said, oh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of follow your lead on it. And then she came over to me after and she was like, were you telling Jeff he was doing it wrong? I was like, <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> but it probably wasn't, you know. Well, it was brilliant. Um, yeah. Really is brilliant. So it was nice to remake in, in the studio, you know, with, with, you know, to spend the time. But in the end, it, it became a bit of a rush at the end anyway, because, um, you know, we were running out of time for the show and I'd easy to get everything bonded and photographed. So my screws aren't quite lined up again, which I think was <laughs> one of the <laughs> one of the biggest flaws pointed out on the show. But at least it's authentic. You know? Well, it's handmade. Yeah. And that's the thing with yeah. everything that is here. Mm. This isn't machine made. This I'm isn't, an eyeballer anyway. Exactly. So. This isn't rulers. It's not machine jigs. It's all done by eye and by hand. And like I said, the level of skill is uh, really fantastic. Thank you. So congratulations, both of you. I think it's a fantastic show. Thank you. I think you would all agree. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity for anyone if they would like to ask any questions about the work, anything particular. Yes? What So that's what technique would you like to learn you maybe haven't already or maybe get a better education of in yeah. like America? Yeah, so I, I think um, one of the things we're planning on doing in, the, in our new studio is to actually switch the furnace off for uh, a few months of the year and previous to that, make our own colour out, out of the pot. So when the pot is finished, uh, and, and when to the end of its life, we're going to make our own color. And then I would really love to do some um, cast work, which I've done very, very briefly and vaguely in the past, but I want to do some big wall panels, uh, base relief sculpture of, of still life work as well, incorporating some hot made elements like the fruit into a monochrome um, scene where I'm actually using the bottles that I've made to press into a mold and then cast in and then add these beautiful, um, you know, gems of colour with the fruit and, and whatever afterwards. It's all a bit vague, but I've got a lot to learn about casting. <laughs> the only time I've made a plaster mold was for a project we were doing together years ago. That, that was our first That was our first collaboration <laughs> and it lasted uh, about the time it took me to scrape the plaster off my bathroom floor, I think, <laughs> like when the mold burst. And I remember you calling me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, Does this come off? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so plaster, if it goes and it's liquid, goes everywhere. And it seems like the most like, oh my God, how am I going to deal with this? And you start to deal with it while it's wet, which yeah. then gets even more of a mess. And I was there, he's cool. He's like, let it set. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as it's dry, you can deal Hammer with it. Hammer and chisel. And it's like, after that, you're like, ah. Oh God for that. Yeah. So I think, I think casting is, um, is something I'm going to explore next, you know. Um, sticking to a theme um but you know i'm well, talking about frustration that you maybe had with the uh, goblets or things like that would be interesting to oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> know about Hammering other frustrations <clears throat> as a thing with glass there's as you can see from sort of the myriad of work that's here there's many different processes so casting and blowing are usually quite sort of alien things blowing is very instant it's on the blow pipe in the hot shop whereas casting you'll you'll spend time making a mold and put cold glass inside of it in the kiln it gets hot and the glass will then take the form of that mold in the kiln so it's and they're different melting points different 
cooling down points. It's a, it's a whole other. Yeah, no, no technique is is easy. They're all, no. it's all incredibly hard. So I'm going to try and learn. <laughs> Uh, the question here from Emma Foster online, uh, it says, how do Beth and Elliot work through ideas? Do they talk through how they make things? Lots of sketchbooking together or separate? I think it's quite separate, really, isn't it? I mean, really? well, initially... I think it's very, very, like... Well, he did call me every day. Uh, he got yeah, a great refund. Yeah. Well, that was away. different. That was Actually, different. like, I think a Beth few of them was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> <laughs> I think, I mean, initially, I think we, we work a little Actually, bit separately. he steals my ideas. <laughs> I can't believe you've just said that. Um, so, yeah, initially, I think we do work a little bit separately. Uh, but then, you know, we have each other always to bounce ideas off. Yeah. And uh, I know I'm onto a good one when I tell Beth and she goes, oh, that's horrible, that'll never work. <laughs> That's when I know I'm also a good one. I mean, at least you know what you want when someone tells you it's rubbish. Exactly, it? yeah. <laughs> but you do do a lot of sketch. I know you do a lot of drawing and uh, your processes of thought in that way, but do you do a lot of drawing with... Oh, with, with the Marshall Landscapes, I, I, I enjoy... I mean, we, we like going walking, visiting places, visiting places abroad, and uh, we just get... Alec gets his sketchbook out and I get my paints out and we, um, oh, here we go. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the, yeah, some digital painting and some uh, actual painting when we go to different waterfalls or, or what have you. Yeah. So, um, I mean, we get into the middle of the piece and I say to Elliot, it's like, oh, it's just not going right. What, what? What do you think? Shall I use this color? Where shall I go? And then we do work. We definitely work together on my pieces. And even if he tells me to do something particular, right. which isn't right, it makes me, you know, it's sort of like flipping a coin and, and, and making a decision. If someone says, I'll go for this one, it makes you realize which one you really want. Um, so, yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, we you do. Can't, definitely. You, can't, you know, we couldn't do it on our own, even not physically, but mentally as well. You know, we have to have that interaction because studios are so you know apart from here where there's like um quite a few different artists working and you know when i was be quite working isolated, here it was great you know you're always bouncing ideas but now um you know we're, we're we're together and we're the people you know it's like this isn't it you know once we've got an idea it's constant sort of back and forth and figuring it out and we have to work through the process together as well you know because uh i remember when we were putting the lobster together there was I can't remember mm -hmm. exactly what it was, but it kept falling off. And then you, you suggested something which sort of made it all work because you were noticing something that I wasn't when you were heating yeah. because you're handling the piece and I wasn't. So, you know, you have to have that. But, you know, initially, you know, like anything, it all starts off in your own head and yeah. you figure it out yourself. That's the easy bit. You, that is the easy <laughs> bit. And then transitioning back, yeah, from here to, to, life, to this yeah. is... Uh... Yeah, but we both work in 2D first. I mean, I have like, I always have the same sketchbook from the same company, same size, and it's just full of, of 2D, you know, drawings and stuff. It's all monochrome, you know, and then the color comes from the glass because you can never replicate it, I don't think, in no. any other no. way. So, you know, yeah. the color's the hard, hard bit. Can I ask you about your ring? Is this a miniature of one of Elliot's lines? Yeah, oh, yeah, that's, so, that's yeah. Only yeah. Yeah, and it just <laughs> fits there. <laughs> so this is, that was something that, um, we made with uh, Sam Sam Ritty as well. This is like so the, the metal worker who's done the yeah, nails. Yeah, who did for... the nails? Yeah, there's there's another version of this which is absolutely wild. But yeah, the the cane is like a mini version of the fruit. But he didn't make it to fit my finger. So, so is this like Beth had it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is this something that that's just personally for Beth, or that you're are you going to start developing jewelry of this nature? Well, I mean, it's never been my plan, but um, you know, there might be there might be something in the future. But for now, it's just. For, well, it's very eye catching. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions uh, from you guys here you would like to know? Yes? On, on the show, um, you've spoken that it's clear that the relationship is so important. How difficult is it getting different people to work with? <clears throat> Yeah, it was it was a real. Do you want to repeat the question? Yeah, sorry, just to repeat. It's about how difficult relationships are 
to, to working develop. Working with new people. Yeah. yeah. So the the because the, you're give, so on on the show Netflix, you yeah. were given students, local students. They said they were students. They were very skilled. You know, they were they were really good. You but know, you didn't were, know them. You we, were... We'd never met them. I mean, it doesn't matter how skilled you are. Really, building that rapport um is is the is the thing which really really takes the time you know um and we've had years and then on the show you had a different assistant for each piece you weren't allowed to speak to them or even look at them before the timer started and then you had to build that rapport straight away and it just didn't happen you know you just you know it didn't matter how good they were if you didn't have that click it it just you know you had no time to build it you had no time to communicate with them um and they were, they were all fantastic, but we were definitely, all of us were like battling through that um, because you don't have any of that, um, you know, that uh, unspoken language. It just, I mean, there's the language of glass, there's the language of hot glass and, you know, they had the level of skill where they could understand a bit, but there was no subtlety, there was no nuance. And so like, when I look at the pieces that I made on the show, even though it was under time, I just look at them and sometimes I, I like wince a bit because I can see all the bits where it like could have gone better. And so that's why we're sort of, you know, we're enjoying like redoing stuff together and it's just great yeah. to be but back They're, they're an the expression studio. of an idea, those things. Yeah, they? they're like, it's like, it was like a, it was like a test run yeah. or something, but yeah, it, it was the hard, it was a so really I've got hard to say, part. what have I favorite bits of the show is like and i i, no, and I know you well, well so i like, hurt a couple of them it feels so really bad because you can't even say sorry you just gotta get on with it you know? it's like you're all right yeah you're bleeding yeah just like put your, put your finger on it and carry on yeah. the first guy rob he was amazing you know he he worked like a trooper because the first piece that i made was so That's ambitious huge, yeah. and there was so much going on i remember him walking out to go and get a drink or put a towel on his head and i was just like no 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 <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. Because it was it was never hotter and never harder than on that first episode when you put ten ten glory holes, holes. ten glory holes glaring people everywhere. And he was a, he was just he was so good. He really battled through. You know, he might have kidney problems <laughs> from like lack of water. But yeah. Well, having worked with you for you know quite a few years, I you know I could see in certain bits of the shows when maybe you were getting a bit stressed or you know you know the pressure of the event. And I think at the point where you're trying to tell one of the assistants what you want and you just have to go to... Yeah, that was the thing. Tweeters, they or... didn't call anything what we call it. Okay. They didn't call anything the proper name. So well, I, I, <laughs> you know, it's like, I really enjoyed... That's a bar. That's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, uh, Tim and myself have had the same sort of uh, building of a, a relationship in the studio because, you know, I was working here for seven or eight years and... I think for two or three of those years, we were partnered up working insanely on these massive, the Burano <laughs> series, like day after day after day, and your arms were getting bigger. Like you were saying, your arms just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, you know? So we've been through all that, like learning to turn with someone and, you know, when all the steps have got to be done. So yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a thing. It does take years to develop. Mm. But I, I, I really enjoyed your signs for tools. I found that. Uh, quite funny. Are there, are there any other questions you would like to ask? Um, I'm quite surprised to hear that uh, that you rely on Beth so much for the heavy lifting. I mean, and and you're no longer a vegetarian, so I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, you know, you you bulked up quite a bit since I saw you well, last. Nickname is Big Beth. In a muscular way. Of course. of course, yes. I mean, you would. I mean, the thing about um, it's technique as well. It's more technique. Than, to be yeah. honest, like um, I, I was sort of, I'd say my the the most informed I've been from someone was a, a Spanish maker um, called Alba, who was you know half my height and half my weight, and she would work with really big um, masses of glass as well. And it's more about how you where you hold it, where you are hold it, how you lift, how you turn and making sure you have the right sort of distances in place. I but mean, you know, I mean, the corn, definitely the corn was painful. Pushed. 
me to my limits, but he had wrist straps and everything, all the safety equipment that it, it doesn't damage you. Yeah. And we only do one a day. <laughs> so that's it. Yeah. <clears throat> Are there any more questions from people online, Sophie? Is there any others that you want to put forward? Well, all I'd like to say is if you haven't come to see this show already, uh, like I said, the skill level, but you're know, talking about size and scale, of these objects, in terms of things that are free blown in hot glass, the sculptural quality of what's here is, is really fantastic to see in real life. So I hope that people watching online are able to come and see them in the flesh. Thank you so much for coming here tonight. I hope you've enjoyed getting a bit of insight and knowledge into Beth and Elliot's practice. Can I say anything, Peter? Yes, I just, I really want to say thank you to you both. Thank you. Uh, I mean, you know, like Tim, uh, I, I'd been away and wasn't here when this show was set up. Uh, and of course, I'd like to thank Gina and Becky and Isabel and Sophie and all the team for the fantastic job they did. I mean, it doesn't look like this normally. We've shifted it all around a bit. But um, like, I mean, uh, you know, I used that very same pun. You know, I was blown away the minute I walked in. You know, I was just so impressed. And it is, it is partly about the skills. And we've always, we've always been aware that um, Elliot, you know, I haven't worked with Beth particularly, but I've worked a lot with Elliot, you know, about his technical ability, but it's actually very, and, and uh, you said so earlier, you know, it's very much about the ideas that have been expressed here, you know, through this show. They're quite surreal in many ways. And, um, and that, I've found that to be incredibly refreshing because, um, you know, I remember when you first came, it was all about the figure and, and that was as far as it went, really. And I, I mean, honestly, the... The evolution. The evolution, yes. The development has been an incredible. And I, um, I want to say, you know, I just want to thank you both for your work and to say how very, very proud we are. Of, well, both of you, actually, you know. And, you know, we wish you absolutely the best with this new... You know, I think you're very brave starting a student. <laughs> you know, when I get asked by people, do you want, you know... Shall I start a glass blowing studio? I said, don't even think about it. <laughs> My God, but you're very brave. I mean, you know, the price of gas, they, they, you know, things are so... The availability of gas. <laughs> so tenuous now, you know, in many ways. In fact, um, I think it's worth saying this at this point, because I had this conversation with a journalist a day or two ago, you know, that there is, um, you know, there may be a time in the not too distant future when we actually won't be able to blow glass for one reason or another, either costs or fuel or raw materials. Raw materials. Yeah. Exactly, you know. Uh, so I suppose on that note, make the most of it, please, while you can, you know. I remember Andy, Andy McConnell in one of our previous books wrote, uh, you miss it when it's gone kind of thing, or you, you don't know you miss it until it's gone. So. Uh, yeah, make the most of it while we're, while we're here. Yeah, thanks again. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you, Tim. Good job. Thank you, Peter. And thank you all for coming. And most of all, thank you, Beth and Elliot. Okay. Cool. <laughs>